explanation, and the uh, sermon is always at the beginning uh, for a regular mass. Um, so if anybody's sorry about that. Uh, though we have the, uh, everybody, if you would like, has a little booklet to follow along there in the pews. Um, I'll just read the epistle and the gospel. They're very beautiful for this Mass. The epistle is from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Brethren, we would not have you ignorant concerning those who are asleep, lest you should grieve, even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so with him God will bring those also who have fallen asleep through Jesus. For this we say to you in the word of the Lord, that we who live who survive until the coming of the Lord shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with cry of command, with voice of archangel, and with trumpet of God, shall descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise up first. Then we who live, who survive, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall ever be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. And please stand for a continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus said to her, Thy brother shall rise. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise at the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even if he die, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Dost thou believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, who art come into this world. And thus far the words of the Holy Gospel. Please be seated. So let me just say uh, a few uh, little practical things um, for, for the Mass and um, explanation, uh, primarily. Um, first of all, um, what is this? Um, when, when we, whenever we have a Requiem Mass, and uh, especially the Memorial Mass uh, for uh, someone who has passed, uh, we always make what's called the catafalque, which represents the body. Um, you know, we're not, uh, as Catholics, we do not believe that we're just kind of like supposed to be disembodied souls. We are soul and body, and uh, it's, it's in many ways through having a body that we're able to do the good and the bad, but hopefully mostly the good uh, in this world, uh, loving others, uh, serving others. 
Um, so we, at the end of the Mass, uh, there will be a short blessing of the body. Um, I'll chant the, a very beautiful and ancient chant, the Libra made for that. Uh, I'll do that, and then we bless it with holy water and incense it. Um, because, well, it was in, made in his image and likeness, right? Um, we are made in his image and likeness. Um, I also thought, I recognize most, but um, I remember the first times I uh, attended the traditional, of the Latin Mass, I had, the, the, I had a lot of questions. I didn't quite know what was happening and why certain things were done. So I just wanted to maybe answer the questions, the primary questions that I had when I first uh, attended as an adult. Um, the first is you're going to find that throughout most of the Mass, I will be facing that way. And sometimes people express it as the priest turns his back to the people. And that's not what's happening. Uh, even though it might look like it, it's not what's happening. In the same way that we would never say that a general turns his back on his troops when he leads them into battle, or a shepherd leads his sheep out of uh, out to pasture, we would never say he's turning his back, he's leading. I happen to be uh, a priest. Uh, that's a great gift. Uh, of which I am unworthy. I have seven sisters, and they would all very much agree with my unworthiness in that regard. But I happen to be given this gift, and so I happen to be at the front of what is ultimately the procession, because every every church, this church in fact, is facing east, but every Catholic church liturgically, kind of symbolically, uh, this is east. And why do we face east? We face east because that's where Christ is going to come at the end of time. Um, it's, that goes back way into the Old Testament. The, the Jews, the Israelites, had this idea of directional prayer. So when they were outside of Israel, they would always pray towards Israel. And when they were in Israel, it would be towards Jerusalem, and in Jerusalem, towards the temple, and in the temple, towards the Holy of Holies. And of course, as Catholics, we believe this is the Holy of Holies. Um, God is present in the tabernacle, and so we are all facing the same way, and we're all going towards uh, heaven, ultimately, where Christ will be coming. So that's why the, uh, the priest is facing the same direction as you. The second, uh, the second one is this Latin. Why the Latin? Why is it dead language? Um, you know, when I was uh, when I was in seminary, my family lived rather close to us, and I was it was in Nebraska, and there aren't uh, there aren't tons of luxury automobiles like in North Jersey, in Lincoln, Nebraska, and my brother and I uh, he was maybe ten or eleven at the time. And we were in the car, we were at a, a light, and right beside us was this Corvette. And uh, he looked over and he said, hot. And I looked over and I said, being a child of the 80s, cool. And that struck me. We had said exact opposite words, at least according to uh, Mr. Webster in the dictionary. To mean exactly the same thing. Why? Because English is a living language and it's changed even from the 80s to now. Latin is a dead language, meaning it's not spoken on a regular basis, except in really nerdy circles in universities, right? And so it hasn't changed. When I was in Europe, in France one time, I was at a monastery and I offered Mass, and uh, the book, so the Missal, that's the big. Uh, book that we read the prayers out of, that missile had been published in 1680-something. And I was able to use it, and the words mean exactly the same. So there's a certain protection to the truths that are expressed in the Latin. And I think Latin also now has become, 
it's a little bit more mysterious. And if there's anything that this rite kind of, this rite of mass, this liturgy has, it's, um, it's a little otherworldly. It's a little different than the rest of our lives, which I think is a really beautiful thing. And, and Latin uh, kind of contributes to that as well. And I think that leads into what was my third question, which is, why so much silence? You're going to notice that once I stop, uh, there, there's going to be, for the most part, at least to a great extent, um, a lot of silence. Well, I think it, this also, in a certain sense, goes back to the mystery. There's a, there's a line from a song, I think it's Mercy Me. I, I'm not I'm afraid that I listen to that, but it, that line really struck me. It says something like, uh, it's talking about being in heaven. Will I stand in his presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing Alleluia? Will I be able to speak at all? And sometimes I think in the presence of tremendous mystery, uh, silence is in a certain way like the most appropriate reaction. Um, my dad delivers a lot of babies and he says that, well, other than the crying baby, uh, oftentimes the couple, especially the first child, uh, there's just this kind of odd silence that this little one has come into the world. Silence, however, in, in this context, uh, sh should not be empty. It's not an emptiness. Um, hopefully, it's it's a fullness. In fact, um, because of the presence, right? We're, we're silent in the presence of the mystery. And the mystery, certainly in the holy sacrifice of the mass, is that God comes down onto our altar. That God is present with us. Um, you know. There are very, very few religions that have a God present, and if he is present, you, know, you don't have to read the Greeks and Romans very much to say, to, to re recognize that most people, when they think of a God present, they want to stay away. This is the God who comes to our souls, who wants to live with us, who wants uh, to give us his peace and his uh, strength and his forgiveness and his mercy. Um, that's, a, that's a place of a beautiful mystery and uh, some silence, I think, too. So I would encourage you during the silence to not let it be empty, but rather to allow um, allow the silence in a certain way to speak to you, to the uh, silence in your heart. You know, in the Old Testament, the prophet Elijah said, uh, "You know, God does not come in the great wind or the raging fire or the the." hurricane or the earthquake, he comes in the silence of the gentle breeze. That's where we hear him. So I would encourage you to just be open to whatever the Lord uh, wants to speak to your heart today. St. Paul told us in the epistle today that we do not grieve as those who have no hope. Hope in the supernatural sense of the word is not like normal natural hope, right? I hope it's not going to rain. I hope this will happen down the road. Supernatural hope is a certainty. When we say we hope in something supernaturally, we say we have a certainty that it will happen, not because of the thing itself, but because of the person of Christ. Because Christ has said we can have hope in him. Recently, of course, we celebrated the Feast of the Resurrection, and I'm always struck by whenever he is approaching the apostles after the resurrection, he is constantly telling them, my peace be to you. His presence, when we let him in, brings peace. It, it doesn't mean that we don't grieve. Of course we grieve. Um, be 
because we grieve what we love, and the more we love, the more we grieve. But not without, not with, as those who have no hope. And yet the, the church, at least in the ancient rites, has a certain grief along with a family, along with uh, those who are grieving. We wear black vestments. It's a sign of grief. Uh, the, the vestments, there's violet, um, a, a sign of grief and penance. Um, the flowers got taken off the altar. It's more bare than it usually is on uh, a day in Easter time because the church, the mystical body of Christ grieves with us as we grieve. But again, uh, not as those who have no hope. Padre Pio uh, had, and I think probably many of you have, have heard of him, and he was a bit of a gruff uh, peasant Franciscan in Italy. Uh, many of the World War II veterans went to visit him uh, when they were over there during the war, and that's kind of how he was known in this country. He's now a saint, but he has a beautiful quote. Um, I memorized it because I like to uh, tell it to lots of people. And um, it goes pretty much exactly like this. He said, I believe that very few souls go to hell. He said, because I believe that sometime between the last breath and the judgment, Christ appears to a soul and reveals who he really is. And Padre Pio, there are many, many um, well-documented examples of the miracles that he uh, had in his life. Uh, he talked regularly to his guardian angel. There is a documented case of him being in two places at the same time. Um, and I suspect that uh, when, so the, the last thing Padre Pio said was, when Christ reveals himself to a soul as he really is, he said it's almost impossible to say no. And I suspect it's because Padre Pio knew that from personal experience. I think that's a beautiful, it's a beautiful way to understand Christ. He's the one who wants us to be with him. It's why he created us. From all eternity, God's thought was to have us with him in heaven, in eternal happiness. And I think that's a beautiful way of understanding Christ. That doesn't mean that we don't pray for the repose of souls. Right? Um, but I think it's important to remember God is outside of time. So our prayers now for your husband, your dad, um, they could be the prayers that the good Lord applied to him at his first communion, or at the moment of his death, or you know, at some confession, at some time in his life, or at some moment that was, was pivotal. His what? The birth of his children. You know, God, outside of time, can apply those graces at any time. And, and I think it's very beautiful um, to remember St. Augustine and St. Monica. Uh, I, th that always comes to my mind. You know, St. Augustine, very famous, um, both inside and outside the church, right? Um, his Confessions is one of the most read books in the history of the world. And at the end of the Confessions, he talks about the death of his mother, Saint Monica. And he, he writes this about her. He says, O oh, my praise in my life, O oh God of my heart, forgetting, and I'm going to shift this to speaking about Paul, because that's the way I pray it today. O God of my heart, forgetting for a little his good deeds, for which I give joyful thanks to thee, I now beseech thee for the sins of my brother. Hearken unto me, 
through that medicine of your wounds, who didst hang upon the tree and who sittest at thy right hand, making intercession for us. I know that he acted in mercy, and from the heart strove to forgive his debtors their debts. I beseech thee also to forgive his debts, whatever he contracted during so many years since the waters of salvation were poured upon him. Forgive him, O Lord, forgive him, I beseech thee. Enter not into judgment with him. Let thy mercy be exalted above thy justice. For thy words are true, and thou hast promised mercy to the merciful, that the merciful shall obtain mercy. This is thy gift, who has mercy on whom thou wilt, and who wilt have compassion on whom thou dost have compassion. Indeed, I believe thou hast already done what I ask of thee, but accept the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord. You know, Paul uh, loved that uh, prayer of St. Francis, right? Make me a channel of thy peace. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. And then that second part of it, which is rather to forgive than to be forgiven. It's very, very uh, beautiful. I, I talked to him about it more than once. Um, and that's what I hear in St. Augustine, right? That his mother had striven to do those very things uh, that Paul tried to do, tried to live. Um, I think I mentioned it at the wake, but one of the things that he mentioned a number of times to me, and I heard him say, was how grateful he was, um, even as he was uh, growing weaker, that he was as good a husband, a father, as he could be. And I think there was that, uh, he knew that there had been that trans transformation, and I think many of us knew the same thing. He was also pretty honest about himself, that he wasn't perfect, as none of us is. Um, but I think that's a great, uh, great grace, a great gift uh, from the good Lord to be able to have those memories and that knowledge um, that he had strived. And I think in many ways succeeded. He was at least a very good friend that I know uh, from experience. So as we, as we pray this Mass uh, for the repose of his soul and that God, uh, that he be with the good Lord for all eternity, we pray with supernatural hope, right? with certainty that our good Lord has brought him, perhaps already, to the heavenly home which he has prepared for each of us for all eternity. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful depart through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Patris Idio Preco, we have to Maria, Saint Virgin, we have to Michaela Marcans, and we have to Mary Baptista. Sanctus Apostolus, Petrum et Paulum, Omnis Sanctus et Vos Gratius, Orale Comea, Dominum Deum Nostri. Misiliato Nostri, Amicotens Deus, to Mrs. Vitatis Nostris, to Duca Nostri Vitam Eterno. Amen. Idio Gentium Absentium, et from Isiolo Peccatorum Nostrum, to Vitnobis Amicotens et Seu Gloss Dominus. Amen. 
Deus, tu conversas vivo e ficava em nós. É para a história de cada turno. O Senhor não vis domine misericórdia em tua mente salutária turno de Deus. Domine em saúde e oração em mim, como em mim sabe que venha. Domine em seu bispo, não é com o Espírito teu. Amém. Requiem eternam Domine, Domine, Lux Perpetua Luce Adenis, te deixe que nos Deus em si, onde te virei de tu volte em Jerusalém. Exalve a oração em mim, mas te amis para bem. Requiem eternam Domine, Domine, Lux Perpetua Luce Adenis. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Dominus Fobiscum. Oremus. Deus, cui proprio mes miserere sempre de pacere, te supplices exoramus, pro anima famule tui paulo. Quam podie, de poc seclo migrare iusisti, ut non trade seam et manus inimici, neque ad ebis caris in finem sed iubia seam a Santis Angelis suscipi, et et pacere paradisi perduci. Ut quia te speravit et credit, et non penes in fene sustinit, sed gaudia terna possidia. Per Domino nostrum iatitus, in filium tuum, qui te convivere et regna ante unitate Spiritu Sancti Deus, per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. Lexio Pisidiati Pauli Apostoli ad Persononi Census. Fratres, non mus vos ignorare de domientibus, ut non contris temini sicur et certi qui spendam pavere. Si enum credimus quod Iexus modus est, et resurrexit. Ita et Deus eos qui dormi erum per Iexum aducit cum e. Hoc enum vobis dicimus in verbo Domini, quia nos qui vivimus, qui residui sumus in adventum Domini, non preveniemus eos qui dormi erum. Quodim ipse darmus in iusu et in voce arcangeli, et in tuve dei descendet de cielo, et modri qui in Christus sunt resurgent primi. Dende nos qui vivimus, qui relinquimus, simul rapiemum cum ilis in nubibus audium Christo et aerat et sic, semper cum domino erimus. Ita pre consolamini indicem, in verbis is, Deo gracias. Requiem eternum dona eis domine, luz perpetua lucea teis, in memoria eterna eric justus, ab adizione male non timei. Absolve domine animus omnia fidelum defunctorum, ab omni vincula de ricordum, Et grazie a tuoi divisi correnti, mediante le padre, giudici e impulsioni, se non ci sei tempi di attitudine in perfetto. Dia Siri, Dia Sila, solte sei con il fadila, testi e dati con si vive. Quanto stremo è sfuturus, quando iudex è sventurus, con ci stricti discussur. Tu lo virum spagium, sonum persa pulcra regium, cogi nomi santi trovi. Mostro pevit et natura, con risurge creatura, giudicati responsur. Liber scriptus proferetur in potosum continentum in remundus judicetum. Iudex ergo cum sedebit, quid quid latet la parebit, nien in usum remanit. Quid sum miser sum dicturus, quem patronum rogaturus, cum dix iusus is securus. Rex tremendi maestatis, qui salvanus salvus gratis, salve me fons pietatis. Recordare in der sufire, potum calce tue vile, nene per et sila dire. Quenums me sedisti lassus, redivisti crucium passus, tantus lavo non si casus. Iuste iudex luciones, nomen patra missiones, anti diem rationes. Ingemisco tampam reus, culpa rubet dulcis meus, supplicanti pace deus. Qui Maria mot solvisti, et latronum exaudisti, miti quoque spem de visti. Precis me in omsum dignes, sed tu bonus fac benigne, ne perenit crema lini. Inter oves locum presta, et opedis me sequestra statuens in parte dextra. Contutatis maledictis, famis acribus addictis, boca mecum benedictis, oro suplex et eclinis, cor contritum quasi cinis. Cede curum mei finis, lacrimos et dies ila, cor resurgit ex pavila. Judicandus homo reus, fui tempo pace deus. Dia ies, Domine, Dona eis requiem. Amen. Dominus Fobiscum, Sequencia Sancti Evangelii, Secundo di Wanda, Gloria a Dio. In Filotempo, Dixi Marta, Gesù, 
dominant C cuisis e tato meus non cuisit modulus. Sere num shio per que cumpre proposto is adeo dabit tibi deus. Dici que li Jesus, resurgit tato tuus. Dici te mato, shio queo resurgit in resurrectione in novissimo dia. Dici te Jesus, ego sum resurrectio et vita, qui credit in me, et sum simontus fuer et vita. Et omnis qui vivit et credit in me non moietur in etem, credis hoc. Ae vidi uti quae domine, ego credidi quia tuus Christus filius dei vidi, quia in hunc mundum venis. Dominus bovisquum, orius. Domine, yes, rex gloria, libera arma, somnium fidelum decutorum. De penis in family, de profunda lap, vivera eos de order de omnis, ne absorbent et eos tartus, ne gallant in obscurum sensini per sanctus Michael, represented eos in lucium sancta. Quam olim amor de promissisti et semini eos, hostis et precious tibi domini, laudis of veritus. Tu sushi de peronim opus hibis, quadrum hodium memorium facimus, fac eos domini de morte transire ad vitum. Quam olim amor de promissisti et semini eos. Orate fratum, omnipotente, suscepia Domnum sacrificium de mandus sui, salatum e gloria in omni sui, ad utilitatum corpo nostrum, trotius per clesi sui sancti. Omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. Dominus Tobiscum, Sursum Corda. Gratis agamus Domino Deo Nostra. Veli dimitiusum est, Deicum et Salutario Nostri di Santa Corda, Gratis Agene Domine Sancti Pater Omnipotenzi Tenedeus. Per Christum Domino Nostrum, in quod nobis fes beati resurrezioni se fusi, tu quos contrisa certum oni empty condizio, Eos non consolete futuri in immortalitatis commissio. Tu es ene pidelibus domine, in ito mutato non tolito, et dissoluto terrestri suius in colatus dom, et tene in celis habitatio comparato, et idio comangelis et arcangelis, cum tronis e dominazionibus, cum crea minilis e celestis exercitus, imnum gloria tui caminum, sine fin, centes. Sanctus, 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 Sanct
Enrico's prevailing phenomenon, Rosanna in a chest. spoken at the door. Amen. 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 Amen.
Eu já que salve tal e dos monitores de vida e instituição informante e abrimos os vídeos. Patrão, se eu conheço em Gerizão, que o certo nome de uma pena de reino de um que é voluntário sua, se que o gente é o outro inteiro. Para o nosso encontro de ano, dando a pessoa de evento não que serve de nosso ciclo de nosso evento no servitório dos nossos. E nem não se duca a sem tentação, se libera a nossa mão. Perumnia secula seculo. Amen. Pax Domini si semper vobisco. Ecum spiritu tua. Ogni secolo di tolis peccato mundi, dona eis requi. Ogni secolo di tolis peccato mundi, dona eis requi. Ogni secolo di tolis peccato mundi, dona eis requi. Sempiter. Ne c'è un new state, e c'è qui tolle che è dato a me. Dove ne non sono dini, se due tre sono tecchi a me, se tanto di fervo, se non vi torano a me. Dove ne non sono dini, se due tre sono tecchi a me, se tanto di fervo, se non vi torano a me. Dove ne non sono dini, se due tre sono tecchi a me, se tanto di fervo, se non vi torano a me. Just a little explanation of communion in the Catholic Church. It comes from those the two Latin words cum and unio, so union with. So um, we ask that uh, if you uh, present yourself for Holy Communion, uh, that you're a Catholic uh, in union with the Church. What does that mean? That means um, you believe everything that the Catholic Church teaches. Um, you are not aware of any serious sin on your soul since the last time you went to confession, and that you've fasted for one hour before communion. I think with that sermon, I think you're good on the hour.
if you're not going to receive, by all means, please do come, if, even if you would like to come to the rail. Um, you can receive a blessing, and even though you may not be able to receive sacramentally, uh, you can still receive what we call a spiritual communion, uh, asking the Lord's grace and his help in your hearts. Luxe etana lucia eis domine, cum sanctus tuis in etanum quia piusas. Requem etanum dona eis domine, lux perpetua lucia eis, cum sanctus tuis in etanum quia piusas. Dominus vobiscum. Ordinus. Presto quesimus omnipotens Deus, ut anima famili tui paulum. Quae hodie de hoc seco mi gravidi sacrificis purgate et apicatis expedite indulgentium parite et requiem tabit sempiter. Pedagno nostrum iesum Christum filium tu. Qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate spiritus sancti Deus per omnia secula seculo.
Dominus Obiscum, requiescat in pace. So we'll now have the blessing of the capital. You 
Et menos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos a malo, apota inferi, ero et homine anima meus, requiescat in pace. Domine exaudi orationem meo, et clamor meus ad te veniat, Dominus Fobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo ordemus. Absolve quesmus domine animum family tui pauli, ab omnibinculo delictorum, ut in resurrectionis gloria inter sanctus et electus tuos resuscitate respiro. Per Christum dominum nostru. Amen. Requiem eternum tonei, Domine, et lux perpetua luce a Tei, requiescat in pace. Amen. Anima eus, et anime omnium fidelium de cumtorum, per misericordiam de requiescant in pace. receive you at your coming. May the choirs of angels receive you into the holy city, Jerusalem, and with Lazarus, who once was pulled. May you have eternal life. In paradisum educante angeli, in totem Oh, no. 